Welcome to my art studio. I'd love to teach you how to draw a dolphin. And I've never ha uh, drawn a dolphin for one of my books, but it is one of the creatures that is endlessly fascinating, I think because of their high intelligence and their physical beauty and agility in the water. It's amazing. Um, when I went to the zoo in Indianapolis, I was able to have an experience in the water with the dolphins and touch them and really appreciate them and have some sort of contact with them. And I'm trying to think back about that experience and try to draw the essence of that dolphin for you. And I will be drawing you a bottlenose dolphin. And I think in my marine mammal book, I counted 18 different dolphins. And they have slightly different characteristics. But the bottlenose is the one that everybody um, thinks about when they think of a dolphin. So I'm going to start with a pencil so that I can show you the basic shape. After that, I'm going to use my pen when I'm getting really serious. But sometimes it's easier when I'm teaching you to give you a shape first, because then you'll um, keep your drawing more in proportion. So a dolphin, this is very streamlined because it's in the water. It's like very, very muscular. And I'm going to start out with a banana shape. And now this banana is kind of curving in this direction as if the dolphin is about to dive deep. And the dolphin has such strong muscles in its tail that it can propel itself right up out of the water so it's completely in the air. And maybe if you've seen a dolphin show, you've seen all the tricks that they can do. And they seem to enjoy doing that. They do it naturally and they enjoy performing for people. Now this is the basic shape of the dolphin. And then I'm going, it's a bottlenose, so I'm going to add its beak. And I'm just going to use a little bit of a, almost a flying saucer shape that's going to form its beak like that. And then, of course, when I'm drawing the final version, this part won't show. But if you do this little flying saucer shape at, at this end of the banana, this is where the eye's going to go, about there. It's, it's fairly low down on the head. It's not up here. That's, what, that's the mistake I would make, is to put it up there. And you know what they call this part right here? The melon. That's its high forehead. Maybe that's because it's so smart it needs room for its brain. <laughs> but the, um, I'm going to color this in now with my ink pen. And then making a few little adjustments here. The thing that's, uh, I think, hard to think about is that the tail is not like a fish tail. A fish tail would be going, I'll just draw a little bit of a, a fish tail would be, if you looked at it from the side, this is what it w a fish tail would look like. It goes in the water vertically. All the marine mammals, and a dolphin is a marine mammal, and you know what a dolphin is, I mean a mammal is. You know what a mammal is. It is a mammal that um, gives live birth, it feeds its young with milk, and it has fur on it someplace, or hair. And the furs in a dolphin is, are, is very scant, but they do have fur. And then here, here's the way, I'm just showing a little bit from the side, and we call that kind of tail flukes. And it just kind of hitches on the back. So from the top, you would see the tail like this, if it was diving. And whales would have that too. So the, I'm going to put the tail on. And then where it hitches on the other side, you don't see that because you're seeing a little bit from the top. And then this dolphin, the bottlenose, has a dorsal fin. And it's a, quite a large one in the dolphin's family, slightly hooked. And it's about in the middle or a little bit further down than the middle in his back. And then there's also one about, ooh, I'd say about here. It would almost correspond to where the arm of an animal would be right there and then we'll this little black line I can't do anything about but I'll color it when I put paint it in you won't see it as much and here's his eye and they have very intelligent eyes and this little bit of a crease around it and you mostly see the dark eye and you don't see the white part so much in the dolphin now I'm going to do the mouth and everyone says the dolphin looks like it's smiling it's just the way the mouth is shaped but if you don't, the, the, what I would, if I didn't look at the picture, I would start here. But you really want to go up a little bit higher 
and there and there's its mouth. And then uh, the bottlenose has a little crease on its melon, and then this is its um, beak. And that beak that they will use when they're fighting other dolphins, or they can use it to, um, sometimes they're quite aggressive towards other smaller dolphins and other sea mammals, and they can use that. Is he ready to call her in? You know, before I call him in, I just thought I'd, you might want to draw a, a dolphin with its head up out of the water as if to say hi. And I'm, in, it, when you start drawing this animal, here's that shape. And this is its melon, the top of its forehead, and then its mouth, and it's got its smile. You can see the smile a little bit better when the mouth is open. And you can see how the beak it's about the same distance. When it closes up, it's the, this bottom jaw does not go back far. And then it has many, many sharp little teeth because it's a meat eater. It eats fish, mackerel and ocean fish. And then some dolphins live in freshwater. And, and li many live in estuaries, which are rivers that empty out into the ocean where the water is half fresh and half salt and that they will be chasing those schools of fish around. And when you, when you draw this dolphin's um, head, do, if, 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 rather than draw the, a line like this, make it curved a little bit because that's a round shape, that dolphin. It's very chubby and it will have, the way it, when it is in the water, it will have that round shape and you might even want to put a little ripple around showing that there's movement in the water where it's popped its head off and maybe there's a few drops of water coming off and this skin you it's so hard to draw because it's so velvety it's just to touch one of the most exper amazing experiences i've ever had in my whole life because it's so silky and just beautiful so i'd like to color him in or her and their dolphins are quite large animals they're about some of them are 12 feet long or I think the smallest full grown ones are maybe seven or eight of the bottlenose type, which is much bigger than a man lying down. As a matter of fact, my daughter, when she goes surfing off North Carolina, sometimes she'll see dolphins and she said they're longer than her surfboard. And it's quite unnerving to see such a large animal in the ocean next to you. But then the good part is that they say that if there's dolphins in the water, then you won't see sharks because the dolphins will gang up on the sharks. But the shark is one of the dolphin's enemies. And, uh, and pollution, that would be another enemy of the dolphin. And that's something people can do about, do something about. And also sometimes they get caught in nets. So you might want to be careful about what kind of tuna you buy because they have some brands of tuna that are dolphin friendly and they make sure that the dolphins don't, <coughs> the dolphins don't get in the, the nets to catch the tuna. So I'm using um, a little bit of shading here around its eye and there's its beak. I'm just trying to give it a little bit of a rounded look and I'm using my well, I just use water this time on the brush. First I use a little bit of blue and brown mixed together to make that gray, but you could just use gray. I just got in the habit of not using black in my palette. And that's where the tail hitches on, so I've got a little bit of a shadow there. And I really wish I hadn't made that mark there. <laughs> but part of an artist is making a mistake and then trying to do the best with it. Because sometimes what happens is your mistake turns out to be the thing that you like best about your picture because you've got to figure out a way to incorporate your idea that may have not be the usual way you do things. So sometimes that can be an opportunity. I'm just getting a little more water in my brush. And I'm just doing that little shadowing. And because uh, dolphins do not have very... Um, many colors. They tend to be mostly in the grays and the black in that family, but all of you children who love pink, there is a dolphin. <laughs> it's called a humpback dolphin. It lives in um, the Pacific. It's pink. And then it's, its babies are dark gray. And so you can imagine the contrast when you see this 
pink dolphin with their little gray baby. It's pretty amazing to see. So if you like pink, you can draw a dolphin that looks a little bit like this. Well, er everything will be the same except for this, right under this hump this, that goes up a little bit like this, and then the, there's a hump there, and then there's a little bit of a dorsal fin that's smaller than the bottlenose. But they do have a beak like the bottlenose, which some dolphins do not have, or they have smaller ones. So I'm doing that same thing. I'm just going all around the edge to make him look rounder, and I hope that that looks a little bit like it's getting rounder, just as you watch. And if, in my art studio, and if I was doing this in a book, it, I've told you before, it takes an hour to do an inch. So I would be spending a lot, oops, I got too much brown in there. I would be spending a lot of time getting this, this shading right so that it would look round and more realistic. And yeah, I'm just using a little water to, my little way of erasing, <laughs> but no, it looks okay. So now I'll mix up a little bit more of that gray color because they call this the dorsal cape, which is a darker color that extends a little bit back from the melon, and then it comes darker gray. And each animal will have a, diff a slightly different color scheme on its body. And that's why at the Indiana Zoo, I think they have nine dolphins at the moment. And they're, they're pretty old. They're, some are 22 years old and some are, um, they have some younger ones because they had some births, I think it was in 1990. Um, if you go on their, your website, you can get the exact information about their dolphins that they have. And they are, um, are uh, looked after by trained marine biologists who specialize in the care of dolphins and the training of dolphins. And so we have a lot to learn about all the different animals on our planets, but dolphins especially because they communicate so well. And they seem to thrive in activity as well. Did I say activity? They thrive, they thrive um, in captivity. So the dolphins I saw look pretty, pretty happy. They especially like to eat. <laughs> Very voracious appetites. So there's the darker gray that we that they call the um, cape. And now I need a little bit more water on my brush because I want to have this light gray that goes down on the fin there and down his back. He's almost done. Ooh, you know what I have to remember? If I leave a little bit of white along its back, like right here, make a distinct line, that will kind of show as being very shiny, make the dolphin look a little shiny, because they do have very shiny skins. It's velvety, but it's shiny too. So I'll do that up here. And ooh, you know what else? The uh, dolphin... Sometimes when they're, I don't know whether they're fighting or they're playing roughly, but many times you'll see these little scrape marks in the dolphin, and they kind of look white. And I'm just going to use my gray to do it, and they're called teeth rakes. They might have them on their flipper or on their dorsal fin or on their back, and they actually look more white, and I'm doing it with a gray. But we could put some on her, this one too. But when you see a dolphin, maybe it would be at Disney, Disney World or at the zoo, you might see that. And you, when they say rake, it's just like a garden rake. It like those, shows the teeth marks on them. That's what they call it, rake, teeth rakes. And then he has a pink mouth on the inside, so I'm going to do that on this dolphin. And if I had more time, then I'd be making sure that each one of those teeth showed up. And these dolphins, they dive so deeply. Well, I'm just finishing up about telling you about what I know about dolphins, which is not very much. But I do have some wonderful books. And I did learn a lot from the, um, the bi marine biologist at the Indiana Zoo. There's the fluke. You can remember that word. I didn't mean to get that brown there because I want it to be dark gray. 
It's just about done. Oh, well, what I wanted to say is they dive really, really deep, like a thousand feet. So I'm not sure how that works. They hold their breath for a long time. I know that much. But it's a pretty fascinating animal. And they live all over the world. The bottlenose dolphin, some of the other ones have more specific places that they live. But the bottlenose extends. That's one of the reasons I chose to draw it. But mostly in warmer temperatures. And they, in the United States, they migrate a little bit. So they might come all the way up to New England in the summer when the water temperatures are warm and in the Gulf Stream. And then they go down to Florida and South Carolina in the winter when the water is cold up here. So they, do, they are restrict, restricted to the, kind of the warmer temperatures. But this is the one, if anybody here likes Greek mythology, this is the same dolphin that you'd find in the Mediterranean Sea. And there's lots of stories from the olden days about people being rescued by dolphins. And I think that there's some documented um, incidences that have happened not, not that long ago. But that would be something to explore and do maybe a, a paper about. I'd love to learn more about that because they are so highly intelligent and they have that nurturing um, part of their personality where they take care of their babies. They keep to stay with their babies for a long time. And so if they saw somebody that was maybe um, out in, the, in a shipwreck or drowning and they'd just come up to them and bring them to shore. So I'm not sure whether that is something that happens very often. But it's happened enough so that it's been part of history. Um, I hope you have a wonderful time drawing your dolphin and drawing the beautiful blue ocean that, that they live in. And thank you for listening.